All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about how to transform quadratic functions. We're going to be comparing and contrasting individual quadratic functions with each other, and this is going to correspond with 8.4 in your guide and note. So please have them out, and let's begin. So compared to the function f of x is equal to x squared, we also sometimes call this the mother function, by the way, a quadratic function will become either narrower or wider depending on the value of a. Remember, a is the coefficient of our x squared term. It will translate up or down depending on the value of c, and c is our constant, our y-intercept. So let's say we have a quadratic function f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, if the absolute value of a is less than 1, the graph is going to become wider. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, the graph will become narrower. And for any change in our a value, the coefficient of our x squared term, the vertex and the axis of symmetry are going to remain the same. Our a value is going to determine how narrow or wide our quadratic function is going to appear on the graph. And we're talking about the absolute value of them because A can be positive or it can be negative. If it's positive, we're going to be opening up. If it's negative, we're going to be opening down. So we talk about the absolute value of A to identify whether it's going to be narrow or wide. So let's compare the graph of the function g of x is equal to one-third x squared to our mother function f of x is equal to x squared. Well, as we visualize this graph here, there's a couple of things that we might notice. We're going to notice that g of x is wider than f of x, and the vertex is going to be the same. Our dashed quadratic or parabola or a parabola, if we're feeling silly, is going to be the mother function, f of x is equal to x squared, and our solid parabola is going to be g of x, one-third x squared. Now, you're going to, again, you're going to notice that g of x is wider, and that should make sense because g of x, our a value, is one-third. And if we look at this top aspect, well, one-third is less than one, so our graph is going to be wider. Awesome. Compared to our mother function, a quadratic function will become narrower or wider depending on the value of A. Again, it's going to translate up or down depending on the value of C. So we spoke about how the value of A changes our graph. Now let's talk about how the value of C is going to change our graph. Again, let's just look at a general quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c. If c is greater than zero, the graph is going to shift up. If c is less than, the, than zero, the graph is going to shift down. And for any change in c, the vertex is also going to change, but the axis of symmetry is going to stay the same. So let's say we're comparing two quadratic functions and we see that a c value is bigger than the other, quadratic function, well, that means it's going to have a vertical shift going up. If we have a quadratic function whose c value is smaller than another c value of another quadratic function, well, that's going to have a vertical shift going down. So let's compare the graph of h of x is equal to x squared minus 4 to f of x is equal to x squared. So again, we're going to notice that we have our f of x is equal to x squared, that mother function, is our dashed parabola. And we're going to see that x squared minus 4 is our solid parabola. A couple of things that we might notice here is that h of x is translated down 4 units. The vertex of our mother function, that main function, x squared, is shifted down 4 as well because the vertex of f of x is 0, 0, and the vertex of g of x is 0, negative 4. And this should make sense because we essentially took our function x squared and we dropped it down 4 units. 
But notice here, the axis of symmetry stays the same. But vertically, everything was shifted down four units. Awesome. With that in mind, please work on problems one and two on the guide notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. All right, let's compare g of x, that's 1 half x squared minus 3, to f of x, which is x squared, by graphing. So as we graph, we're going to notice a couple of things here. Our dashed parabola on the inside is x squared, and our solid parabola is 1 half x squared minus 3. There's a few things that we're going to see here. We're going to see... Come on, there we go. That the graph of g of x is wider than the graph of f of x. And that again should make sense because the a value of g of x is less than the a value of, of f of x. So since our a value is smaller, then it's going to become wider. Both g of x and f of x open upwards, and that's because they have a positive a value. In g of x, your a value again is 1 half. f of x, your a value is 1. So they're both positive. We're opening upwards. The axis of symmetry is staying the same. And the vertex of f of x, our mother function, is 0, 0. And the vertex of g of x, 1 half x squared minus 3, is 0, negative 3. And that's because we had a vertical shift going down 3 units of g of x. So we shifted everything down three units in the y direction. Let's compare two different quadratic functions now. Let's compare g of x, which is now 3x squared plus 2, to f of x, which is x squared without graphing. So a couple of things we're going to notice is that g of x is narrower than f of x. And that's because the a value is 3. And 3 is bigger than the a value of f of x, which is 1. So it's going to become more narrow. Both of these functions are going to open upwards because the a value is positive for both. The axis of symmetry is going to be the exact same, which is going to be x is equal to 0. And the vertex of f of x is 0, 0, and the vertex of g of x is 0, 2, because g of x is translated two units up. The c value of g of x is positive 2. The c value of f of x is 0. So g of x would be up two units compared to f of x. Awesome job with this, kiddos. Comparing and contrasting is a very high achievement within this setting. So you're working super duper hard. It's going to click if it does, hasn't already. But you're working hard. Keep making yourself proud. Let me know if you have any questions. And please work on problems three to five on the guided notes. Again, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help you out as best as I can. I'll talk to you soon.